I'd like to ask the panel regarding SOCs. Do they think that microprocessors as standalone products for controller applications are going to be, di are be displaced by SOCs? So if you remember, microprocessors from day one were for embedded control applications. Uh, I think now are they going to be gone and replaced by SOCs, which is multiple microprocessor cores plus the kitchen sink and maybe even some mixed signal thrown in? Well, I think even even simple systems have multiple multiple microprocessors, and uh, it's a simple systems in the terms that we think of today. And they, you know, if they're going into sort of where mechanical or other kinds of you know other interfaces, there's thousands of different configurations of multi microprocessor systems which have various A to D and D to A and analog interfaces and you know you name it, uh, you know that that are available. So. You know, I, I would guess that there are actually fairly few pure microprocessors sold versus the microprocessors that are embedded on some system on a chip because it's very feasible to integrate uh, some analog capability or other thing into a, a very tiny, tiny microprocessor. And, you know, it already costs zero and adding zero to zero means it's still zero. So uh, it, it doesn't increase the cost that much. And being able to have it in a single chip is a, is a is a is a good thing, and so I I am not deeply enough involved in the industry today, other than as an observer. But my sort of understanding or observation is that there must be uh, there are so many different variations of microprocessor controllers that are microprocessors plus a bunch of other stuff to tailor yeah, them to okay, a particular example, application. A great example is Qualcomm Snapdragon which uses a RISC microprocessor core. But having said that, I believe that Intel's main revenue today is from microprocessors that they sell into the server market where they have a huge Well, Intel market. is a special case in the sense that it sells this, I mean, Intel is a special case in so many ways. Uh, and, I mean, it's, so the fact that, you know, when it, when you talk about its microprocessor versus virtually every other microprocessor being sold, you know, theirs have billions of transistors and most of the other billions of processors sold are a tenth as complex or less uh, and include you know lots of other interface logic and other things around them such that comparing Intel's microprocessor and that microprocessor is is a complete apples to oranges comparison. Let's see how it's coming then I have a question for Yeah, one of the interesting things to realize is a semiconductor company makes or loses money based on inventory write-off. Okay. So the attitude of semiconductor companies is to hear fewer dies okay, because each die's inventory has to be you know, maintained. Therefore, it pays uh, or it behooves to have chips you know, which can do many things using programs so that there's a consolidation of uh, different things occurring so that you have volume not only volume for cost reason but volume for managing inventory okay. and so what, what tends to happen is you know chips like any other product become product line that means there's a continuous once you are in a good space is a continuous improvement that is taking place. So it's all right, next year it'll be this. A year later, or maybe cycle is a two-year cycle, cycle maybe one-year cycle. We certainly see that in this drive industry. 